You are now listening to FemRegard Podcast with Tessa Markle and Carolina Alvarez. Mmm, Fem. Welcome back, listeners. So today we have an extra special guest because you've probably seen her work on Netflix. Uh, this is Sky Boardman. She's the producer, director, and cinematographer, correct? Of correct. Abducted in Plain Sight. Girl, all the trades. Yes. All the, <laughs> loving that. That's what we're about here. Yes. And if you haven't watched it on Netflix, guys, like it is wild. Oh, <laughs> I highly my recommend. Oh, gosh. What a story. I mean, it's real life. That's what's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. I know. It's it's such a It's such a complicated, weird mind-bending story isn't it yeah it is how did you come across it it was really uh the book that the brobergs wrote mm-hmm. and saw that. um yeah one of the producers stephanie toby uh found the book and read it and and thought my gosh this is a crazy story and approached me with it and i read it and said how could something like this happen and yeah. so right so it was really at that point that we kind of said let's let's do this and let's let's figure it out and that's really what was the most intriguing thing to me about the story was mm-hmm. i just i really didn't understand and how a girl could get kidnapped twice by the same guy. Yeah. How was that reaching out to the family and, you know, getting them to tell all that like sensitive material? It was interesting because I they were really ready to tell their story mm-hmm. in a very public way. I mean, they've been living with this story for now 45 years. When we were shooting with them, it was 40 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jan was really critical in, in sort of getting her family on board. She had been talking about it, public speaking and sort of spreading her message for, for quite some time. And right. her family has always been very open about talking about it. So um, it was it was really great to talk to them about it. But Jan was really, really the force behind it. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. You could you could definitely tell that on the show 100 percent. But I was like impressed that the parents were even to be so open about their experience you know the whole thing yeah because it's easily it, you're able to kind of be like whoa how could you you know as a viewer like let this happen and so mm-hmm. it's like really brings you got to have guts to kind of so much guts I mean, that's, <laughs> like, it really does that's what what is still so admirable to me about the parents is just the strength and the bravery it mm-hmm. took for them to oh my gosh. to really sort of bear their souls in such an intimate and vulnerable way. And and I think they really had told the entire story for the first time with the documentary mm-hmm. in the book. They didn't talk about um, their sexual affairs. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think maybe the book was just a little bit too, too soon or they didn't yeah. really realize kind of totally. what integral sort of parts those affairs had in in sort of the brainwashing elements of everything the manipulation huge amounts of manipulation right and so i think that it was after the book and and they kind of thought about it some more and 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 really realized you know what what huge pieces of the puzzle those two situations were yeah and so since you wrote it you found like those elements and kind of piece them all together yeah so it was interesting because we did it was it became a lot more of an investigative journey than i had originally thought it was going to be i Mm -hmm. thought it was going to be sort of talking to this family about these instances that happened to them 40 years ago and and it was certainly about that but it really you know we got fbi documents and we got Mm -hmm. a lot of the um the court transcripts and so it was reading through wow. kind of thousands of pages of these documents oh, yeah. where we got so much more information and information that the Brobergs themselves had either forgotten or or didn't really know about. And wow. so we were able to piece a lot more of that together. That must have been mind blowing for them, too. I, mean, I can't. It imagine. was. I like, mean, to like be like, oh, wait, that that actually was said and happened. Like, yeah. And it's so curious because, you know, memory is a really interesting thing. You totally. Know? I mean, I think we've all sort of changed our history by just deciding that <laughs> mm-hmm. something did or didn't happen. And and I think the Brobergs, I don't think they necessarily did that, but I think yeah. that they live in this world and they've been talking about their story in in this one certain way. And so to be reminded of these other things that happened, they were really open to that and they mm-hmm. were really, you know, able to listen to that because they even, you know, there were a couple stories where each of the different siblings and the different parents had a different recollection of how something happened. Wow. And so to be able to kind of go back and read their own words in court transcripts was was really illuminating for them. Yeah, I'm sure. So is this your for- first documentary or is that something you do already? It's my it's my second documentary that I have been the sole director on. Okay. I um I've shot Congrats, girl. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um I've been the director of photography on a number of 
feature length documentaries um, over okay. the past probably 10 years or so. So mm -hmm. so I've been out in the field a lot. Shooting. And documentary is like your genre. Yeah, it's say? my love. I, it definitely is my love. I um, I've I've worked on a lot of fiction films as well. Okay. And and I, I, I think there's great, great, great stories out there to be told. But I really, you know, I've come away from the scripted films and and they were great experiences. But there's always when I come away from a documentary, I feel like my life's been changed. Like mm -hmm. I've experienced something in a much more real sort of dramatic way. And and I like that element of it. I like being able to enter into somebody else's world that I really would have no opportunity to do unless I was stepping in to kind of tell mm -hmm. their story. So that's that's what I love about it. That's great. That's really cool. And what made you decide like you know, streaming and specifically Netflix is where you wanted this project to go. Yeah. When we first started working on it, I'd always I'd always thought that Netflix was a great home for this story. Mm -hmm. And and so we I mean, I don't think we were necessarily, you know, sort of making the film with that in mind. But but the more we made it, the more I just kept feeling like this was a great home for it. And we did take it out to a number of different places and we were kind of shopping it around when it mm -hmm. was finished. And, and Netflix hopped on board and sort of became our champion. I mean, because it was an independent film through and through, you know, I mean, it mm. was it was three mm -hmm. women who kind of really decided that we wanted to make this. And yeah. and we self-financed it. And my production company, wow. Top Knot Films, you know, we came on board and and we produced it and and so it was really it was really independent. And so to have it be able to get out there to 109, 90 countries through Netflix yeah. is really it's just such a such a privilege. And I'm, I'm so happy that Netflix kind of believed in it enough to to sort of become our champion. Yeah. Well, first of all, congratulations, because thank that's you. Awesome. Just to be on there. And I mean, like you've definitely been getting some great press. I mean, I know tons of my friends are like, oh, did you watch that yet? You know, when it first came yeah, out my, and everything. I, before and, even meeting you, my yeah. I remember the story like six months ago, my brother said he watched it. And then when I said, I'm like, I'm actually having the director on the show. <laughs> He's like, oh, my gosh, I actually watched it twice now. It's and crazy. My friends are like. I, it's it's people like friends of mine have come up to me and said people that don't even know you were talking about the film. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's always a good sign. <laughs> and wow. I'm like, oh, sweet. And there was there have been a couple times, honestly, where where I've been walking down the street and somebody's passed me going the other way. And I can hear them talking about abducted in plain sight. And oh, that's, that's so cool. Wow. It's just the most mind blowing thing because I mean, it's great for the film to be getting recognition and success. Mm -hmm. But even beyond that, it's it's always been our hope with this film to just start the conversation exactly. about about child abuse. And yeah. and I think that it's a hard conversation to have and that people are talking about it, that people are watching it twice, that people are are watching it and then going to their friends and saying, My gosh, you've got to watch this. It's really opened up a conversation that's hard to have, mm -hmm. but I kind of feel like it's happening, which is which is like the the biggest, biggest, biggest honor that I could ever imagine. Yeah, because you see the courage of the parents coming forth, the, of course, the daughter and and then it's like, wow, OK, we can. Yeah, we can actually talk about that because. This isn't, it's crazy, but it's something that happens. Yeah, right. it's real life. Yeah, and and Jan's sisters too. I mean, I think that, you know, they just deserve such recognition as well because because they've always sort of gone through this kind of in the, in, in the it's shadows. It's weird, mm -hmm. yeah, it's and, like, yeah, but it's, it's an outsider, but in, complete insider, but still you feel almost like an outsider, right. but you're still experiencing all of this. Yeah, like, wow. and I just, I imagine, you know, what they go through, even now that the film's getting so much recognition and it's Jan and her parents. And then sometimes people mention the sisters and just, mm -hmm. you know, sort of growing up in that dynamic has got to, I mean, it's such a great, I keep thinking it would be such a great story to sort of explore like these people on the fringes of, of this really traumatic experience or event and how they deal with it and what right. what kind of you know psychology sort of goes into how you navigate through the world when it didn't yeah. happen to you exactly yeah it's weird Whoa. huh i know, <laughs> I know. i'm like <laughs> thinking like yeah what, what kind of almost lessons you can learn from that as well like mm -hmm. did, did how do you like notice things and and talk about them if you like because totally like i wonder if they at all tried to talk to the parents about you know 
yeah what I mean, was going on and... yeah and it's it's funny because both her sisters have have children and so it's and jan has has a child mm -hmm. and and so it's always i said well how can you possibly have children after going through this like do you ever do you just right. lock them in their rooms <laughs> all the time are you so terrified true. but they've become such great communicators i mean they mm. there's i mean there's nothing that they don't talk about you know the family is still a very strong family and they talk about everything and they still believe in talking to their children about everything i love so, that that's one thing i really loved at at the end that there was that that was the resolution that i yeah. saw that i'm glad happened it's real life again that's not some made up story <laughs> right. that like now everyone's still stronger than ever yeah but it was nice to see that the they you know they the parents stayed strong the kids all stayed strong and that was just i like kind of relief that they mm -hmm. had each other yeah and they the found end. a way to get to, through it to together get through it exactly yeah. yeah yeah um jumping back to like kind of the documentary side of things the space because we we're we're just uh we focus on independent filmmaking which also stems into documentary but how like obviously the setup and the story like they're just different worlds or are they just different niches that you really in order to be successful in a field you really have to build your your res like not resume but you know your your filmmaking storytelling to that experience yeah like how different really is you know documentary from fiction and i don't think they're different no i don't think they're really different at all i mm -hmm. think that um i think the approach like the the where the majority of the work lands at a different spot okay. right okay. because with i think that the that a good story is a good story mm -hmm. and that a good story comes from good characters good structure and and those two main things of course you know it has to look good it has to sound good you know but but good story and good structure are predominantly what makes a good story and both documentaries and scripted films need that mm -hmm. in a scripted film that should happen before you go out to shoot mm -hmm. i actually think that should happen to i think 80 percent of that should happen in a documentary before you go out and shoot too but there's so many different things that can sort of happen when you're out in the field in a documentary because it is real life that can sort of you know introduce new things or take you off off in a different direction and so a lot of the story like is with really... the fbi research exactly. and court records that yeah. you're looking at you you would then kind of get inspired to include it in as part of the story right so right. then out of curiosity how much of it had you had already scripted before like well we were yeah we were or it was just the whole journey you started piecing together after you probably were doing some heavy duty yeah. you know, like <laughs> we were lucky because there was a book and mm -hmm. so we had oh, right. we had mm -hmm. an outline to start with and so so that's kind of how how we approached it and I, I went through and I kind of made an outline on based from the book mm -hmm. and then went out and found all this new stuff and so then we spent quite a bit of time going out getting interviews shooting recreations piecing things back together and adding into that story okay. structure yeah, i mean there's there's a lot totally. that we left out from the book and the structure of the film is really different than the structure of the book okay so so the structure really i knew i wanted to sort of make it non-linear and be able to sort of bend time mm. backwards and forwards so I, that I could... I did notice that yeah, yeah, yeah. which I kind of liked because it like you it sets you up for like the crazy abduction and then mm -hmm. it goes back in time to a little bit of the the steps before so you're like wait and then you find out it happened twice I know. <laughs> you're yeah. like what yeah <laughs> I always call it sort of the the Titanic effect that you know you know like when I was watching the movie mm -hmm. Titanic I, I knew what was going to happen mm -hmm. but it's like seeing the steps and you're like mm -hmm. oh and you've got that feeling like they're going to crash <laughs> into the iceberg you know and I kind of wanted that feeling Brilliant to be girl. there you yeah. did it oh thanks because <laughs> <laughs> I was like wait 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 what is it why because I was like waiting for it and then you reeled it back yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, there have been a lot of people say you know my god they got 20 minutes into the movie and they're like what else can happen like right. you're blown it all I everything's know. out there on the table and so <laughs> that's what my brother kept saying actually both of them had yeah. the right same response and i was like wait so this just happened what else and they you both responded yeah, she was texting with, me i was like keep watching <laughs> <laughs> wow so i like that that structure and that's really interesting that um the worlds of docu and you know the fantasy it's it's not that 
I don't think it's different. I, I, lo- I love that opinion because I've heard different takes on it. So yeah. that's why one person was, that I met was like very strongly opinionated that it was really different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think it is. I mean, I think it's, you know, there's a lot more editing involved. You've got to plan mm-hmm. for a lot of editing time with documentaries. But but in terms of how to structure it, you're still sort of looking at whether you're working in like a three act structure, or five act structure or sequences. You know, you're still building one against the next. You know, you still got, you know, conflict involved. You've still got some sort of a climax, some sort mm-hmm. of a resolution. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. it's it's something that feels very sort of natural to us in terms of storytelling. And 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 those where those things land, there's there's not that much difference. It's just that it ha- happens in script format for scripted features and really in the editing, mm-hmm. you know, for the documentaries. Interesting. And yeah. who was the, sorry, who did the editing for oh, you? Oh, James Cood uh, was the editor. And, okay. and it was just such a, such an amazing pleasure working with him. He did a really good him. job. He's a, yeah. incredible because, because I knew, you know, I wanted, I wanted this structure that, you know, we were sort of peeling back the onions, mm-hmm. but he was really the one that made it happen, you know, because I was like, I don't know how you're going to get from, you know, present day to back in time to here and like bend that timeline. And he would just go in and find these little ways to do it and and really took this idea that I had in my head and made it a reality. And he's just such an incredibly talented editor That's and awesome. storyteller. No, I mean, he's got such great. storytelling chops. Yeah, that's fantastic to find an editor that doesn't just know the technical stuff, but can make your dream a reality. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and documentary editors honestly are just they're masters at storytelling, and they really dive in, and they've got they've got this love for storytelling that mm-hmm. that I mean, scripted editors do as well, but it just takes a lot more work to really figure out the intricacies of stories. I think with with documentary editors. Yeah. Um, so real quick, I want to get into just a little bit of how or what your process was to get it to Netflix. Like, how were you able to approach them and pitch to them and all of that? Did an agent come find you? An like, agent? We we sort of, we were introduced to an agent. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't have an agent when we first started on the festival circuit. Okay. And then so during our course on the festival circuit, we met someone and he introduced us to an agent at CIA mm-hmm. and and like it was three weeks before her wedding and, and he's like you've got to watch this movie and i'm sure she was oh, just God. like oh give me a break really right now you want me to watch this movie and uh and she watched it and they came on board and mm. uh, and really just were passionate about it and had a lot of a lot of respect and love for the film and and so they started shopping it around and it was interesting because that was in January no sorry that was in October of 2017 that they started shopping it around Mm -hmm. Netflix made their decision in January of 2018 okay and then it was another full year before we were going to launch on their platform wow yeah so so that's a two uh, year year and and three months ish yeah Yeah, they weren't sure they needed to see I guess where their budgets were at you know when we first approached them and it was only three months until the new year so Mm. We were willing to to wait for that. Um, and then I think it's, you know, budgetary things are just, you know, programming and figuring out the mm-hmm. best sort of time slot. But but so it was interesting because during that year time, I didn't want to just do nothing. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> yeah. so we kind of had made the decision to to keep taking it out, keep screening it, keep taking it to festivals. And honestly, that's it was incredible because getting it into these regional festivals and watching this film with an audience has been the most rewarding aspect of it because you're in this room full of 300 strangers and you're experiencing this together and the question and answers that come Mm -hmm. sort of after are just, it's electric, you know, and people have all these questions and and somebody in the audience has been through something similar and so it strikes a chord and, and they're just, I can't tell you how many screenings we were at where somebody would come up to either myself or Emily Kincaid, one of the other producers, and and say it happened to me and tell us their story. And sometimes they'd never talked about it before, but by watching this film, wow. and I think it has something to do with watching it with a group of people feeling empowered to talk about it. And that's yeah. it it was incredible. It was just incredible. And we did that for an entire year while we were getting ready to go on to Netflix. And so we were kind of building this grassroots audience in these regional festivals and in these small towns Hmm. and and i think that was really really a big part of of having the film sort of come out and 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 strike so many chords that it has been doing Mm -hmm. that's fantastic that you were able to do that because i always wonder you know if something 
if a you know network or streaming platform or whatever it is that the, whatever the case is if they buy something are you still allowed to do things like show it at festivals and all that stuff you know so that's good to hear that a you got to do that and b you got such a positive response from it you know and i think it was and i think it was sort of critical in the film sort of you know, having the the impact that it's had mm -hmm. as well and having that extra year to kind of yeah. To, yeah. to get it out there. Absolutely. I also think timing was really important, too, because our film came out around the same time uh, that uh, Finding Never, Leaving Neverland, Leaving mm -hmm. Neverland um, it came out after the R. Kelly documentary. Yeah. Um, the Ted yeah. Bundy tapes were right around there. Yeah. So there were some really interesting. I've seen all of those right. I know. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, like and, then, before... and then Maddie yeah. McCann, the documentary about Maddie McCann. Mm -hmm. And so there were some interesting themes happening. And I I really do appreciate that the the um, Leaving Neverland doc came out in such proximity because that, I think, really furthered the conversation oh, and totally. helped give a lot the, of context. Again, the manipulation, the, like all that, because it's like, a, I think for me, the biggest takeaway is for the kids, it doesn't feel like abuse. It's, it's so manipulative. It feels mm -hmm. like pure love until you start to become older and aware of these things and even then and even, it yeah. still feels like, like love. love yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's it's such a it's such a complicated emotional reaction and that i think they did such a great job in the in uh leaving neverland to to really give us that perspective yeah yeah i, I believe know, okay. i believe the guys too I, I mean. <laughs> i'm with you girl 100 percent. yeah um that's that's yeah yeah but it's I'm so glad that you got to, you know, tell this story and share it with all of us, but also, you know, make this film. You guys did that on your own. It's not like it was, you know, oh, some yeah. studio production and stuff and then still get it on a major oh, yeah. streaming platform. Like that's yeah. all so exciting. It's great. I mean, it's I just I just think we've been so uh so fortunate. I mean, and we've also I mean, we've worked our butts off to mm -hmm. get it there, you know. So it's it's not just that we were lucky. We worked really hard, but but I know that not every film sort of makes it into Netflix and gets onto a platform like this. And so so there's a lot that goes into it. And and there's a lot, I think, along the way that kind of helped us get there. And mm -hmm. also, I think the stars just really, really did align. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jan, again, super powerful. And like you said, she she also had that that voice the entire time but at the end, especially, you know, to speak out and like be brave enough and like to mm -hmm. to create that awareness. Yeah. And also, I mean, so we started this film, I mean, really we started doing research for it in 2014 and I and I often think that if we'd been able to finish it in a year, mm -hmm. like if we'd finished it earlier than we did, it wouldn't have had the impact. I mean, mm -hmm. I think we needed to get to a certain place as women working in the industry as the mm -hmm. Me Too movement comes mm -hmm. and that we're we're more able to talk about these things. We're more we feel more of a camaraderie and that our voice actually has an impact. And and so the timing, I mean I wish I could take credit for, you know, saying this is going to be perfect timing for this <laughs> film. <laughs> but it just with everything that happened with Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein and and all of the elements that sort of went into play to this Me Too movement. And then especially how women directors are much more People people are asking for women directors now because they feel that these stories should be told by women. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's a real yeah. difference mm -hmm. in the industry now. And even even though we're not 50-50, we're a far cry from 50-50 on sets, I do feel like the tides are turning. And and so I'm very happy that, that somehow we really crested that wave oh, and yeah. the film mm -hmm. got out there at the exact right timing. Yeah. Definitely. And you've been working with uh, your partners, the producers on like have you worked on several projects together this was the first project that that we worked on um as a team and and so it's 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 interesting because stephanie is is very much interested in in doing more scripted kind of work and so she's she's going and doing scripted stuff and emily is still very dedicated to documentaries and so she's looking at a few different documentaries that she's worked she likes both i mean she mm -hmm. likes scripted and and non-scripted and so so we're each kind of going in different directions to see what we can what we can kind of you know, but then everyone up. brings yeah. something to the table. I feel that for sure. way. Yeah, for sure. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And you and you just happen to get connected all because that's like you guys do different things, and then you find this book. And did you really have to like pitch it to them? And 
It was really, you know, I mean, uh, Stephanie and Emily are both actors. And so they had a really great sense of what this story meant from the beginning. I mean, mm -hmm. I think they mm -hmm. they approach stories and they, they kind of throw themselves into it a little yeah. bit more. You know, <laughs> we understand. That. I understand. <laughs> and yeah. I'm not an actor. And so I kind of, you know, I sit back and I'm like, or do we have any archival elements? Can these characters fill this? You know, and I'm yeah. sort of thinking about it from a more of a, you know, how do I put this together kind mm -hmm. of way? And so it was a really great balance yeah, you totally. know to have the three of us sort of putting our heads together and and so it's it's been a really interesting process and then even now you know just having having the three of us sort of go off in different directions has been it's been really cool that's, that's awesome. awesome yeah and you started your own production company? Yeah, my husband and I started a production company in 2010. And and it's it's a small production company uh and our our goal really is to be able to continue making films like this, films mm -hmm. that are sort of really culturally rebel, re relevant, relevant, relevant. <laughs> <laughs> um that that you know challenge the way that we think about things and and so we've got this this approach to it where we've got a couple of bigger clients that kind of help us keep the lights on and that allow us to really take chances on films that we have a complete control over or can maintain complete control while also working with with other people and organizations to work on on bigger budget things so we've yeah. kind of got our our you know our hands in a few different pieces of the pie so it's been it's been really it's been a great experience um having that production company and having that you know sort of power behind us to be able to go out and kind of make anything mm -hmm. that we want to make I mean, it's That's it's great that we don't so feel nice. kind of like handcuffed into to one specific thing. That's great. And yeah. for our listeners, um, do you have what or I guess what's just the best way for them to see more of your work, to contact you if they, you know, want to work with you or whatever um, for either your production company or you personally? Yeah. So I'm getting better at social media. I'm not terrible, <laughs> but I'm not great. Um, you can always find me on, on Twitter and Instagram at Sky Borgman. Uh, my name's got an E on it. S-K-Y-E-B-O-R-G-M-A-N. Uh, our website <laughs> is Top Knot Films. Uh, you can also find my website is um, Skyboard. Does your man have like a man bun? <laughs> no, I do. I always have it up there, and he always he always teases me, and that's how we got the name for the company. Because whenever I'm working, I pile my hair up on top oh, of my girl. head in a uh -huh. little top knot. Or, and if we're not working together, I'll come home, and he always knows what kind of a day it's been, depending on the position of the top knot. <laughs> like sometimes it's way off to the side and just exploding, and yeah, so he can always so tell weird. what kind of a day I've had. I feel that. <laughs> well, before we wrap up, um, I do want to mention. Because, of course, listeners, we're drinking tea like always. Yes. yes we sip um, on it. And this episode's tea is Private Selection brand Pomegranate, Blueberry, Acai, and Green Tea. And it's delicious. And delicious. And it's like super berry like fragrant. flavored and fragrant. I love yeah. It. I yeah. Like it's wonderful. Some vibes. Well, thank you so much, Sky. Oh, this thank was you. Truly yeah. amazing. And yeah. I keep keep making work like this. Oh, thank it, you. It yeah. It does make change. Yeah, we'll keep watching and for we'll sure. Keep watching. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Great. And we'll see we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening to Fem Regard Podcast. If you like what you hear, tune in next time for more tips on the filmmaking business and insightful conversations with industry professionals over tea. We can only grow with your support, so please subscribe, share, rate, and give us a five-star review on Apple Podcast. If you leave us a great comment, we might give you a shout-out on the show. For more on us, check us out at femregard.com.